All right, Brock Thea Howell, Brock Thea Oshai, Brock Thea Howell, Brock Thea Oshai, Brock Thea Howell. Brock Thea Howell, Bashim Yahushai, Bahashim, Rukak Wadash, the blindness of the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, true well. Salutations to the hopeful elect out there. You Akim, Tazadakim, that do this thing in the utmost truth and sincerity. I'm the priest Shaman, and this week's topic is going to be entitled Real Life or Real World Experiences. And the inspiration for the show comes from um, building off the. Uh, the uh, other lesson going into dipping your hand in a cooking jar, you know, going through the trial and the errors and fucking up and paying for it. But guess what that does? That builds real life experience and that counts for something. You know, that makes you actually live the scriptures. That, that, when the scriptures talk about it, um, you know, it's bitter than sweet, you know, that honey. Now, when you quote that scripture and you've lived it, it has more force to it, you know. And that's what the most I does when he puts us through these particular trials and errors. And I know there's a lot going on prophetically. You know, just recently I ran put a bag on Trump's head. But right now I'm going to deviate a bit, man. I'm Spirit's going to have me deviate a bit. And uh, we're going to do some character building type lesson. And uh, I'm going to start with Ecclesiasticus 25 and 6. Much experience is the crown of old men. So we know that, you know, experience means to try out trials. You know, I like to, of course, start with my apostles and my elders who, you know, I could personally say whenever I'm going through shit, more often than not, they've been through something similar, you know, and it's one thing to quote the scripture, man, but it's a whole nother thing to experience the scriptures. Prime example, you could have a brother that knows all the scriptures concerning women, but what if he never dealt with a woman, you know, like, but then you have people in the world, rather, that don't even know the scriptures that that, that, that could tell you, look, the white man's a devil. Why? Because they experience his court system. They experience his, uh, his uh, jail system. Um, they've done deals with him, got stabbed in the back. You know, his child support system. They've seen enough to know, they've experienced enough with this man to look, this guy's a devil, to tell her he's a devil. And even though there's a ton of scriptures on it, he might not know, but he's experienced that situation. You know? So, oh, another example too. We talk about getting locked up for this thing. How many of us have been locked up? We know that apostles and elders have, you know? But we haven't. So it's different, you know? When I say locked up, I mean cast uh, wrongfully in prison for this word, which is going to come to pass. So it's a whole never another thing to live one of the trials and errors that we read about into these scriptures, man. And that's, that's why the Most High puts us through them. And as we grow, and guess what? More shit that we might that we not our flesh. Trust me, our flesh don't want to go through it, but we know that it's for a greater purpose. Yeah, how about Shimei is building us building us up? So the brothers that are going through your trial and error right now, whatever it might be, you know it relates to the scriptures, and you knew it before you were even in the situation, but now that you're experiencing it, you live in the scripture. You know, you live in that scripture. You live in a, you, the most I was putting that trial and error, that fire on you to make you a better teacher, a better prophet of him. This is, um, it says, a much experience is a crown of old men and the fear of the most I is their glory. You got certain old niggas that never left the block. You know? It's an old nigga that never left his porch. That's, that's not, you're not going to really pick anything up. I mean, you might pick up a little street spot here and there, but the more you travel, the more shit you've been through, that's really, you know, the, the more experience you have. And uh, this is what's uttered in Ecclesiastes 34 and 9. It says, a man that has traveled knoweth many things. <laughs> yeah, you know how to see no types of spirits, man. See no types of situations. You know, that's how come the apostles and the elders could break people down, man. People that come up because you, after a while, man, it's like you can see the same spirit just on a different person. You can see the spirit that they're coming in and break the situation down. And we as up and coming um, teachers, we are um, picking up those uh, same keen senses on people, and not, you know, learn how to decipher and break down spirits and break down situations, you know, when to get rowdy, when to be uh, more subtle, when to let somebody speak and when to, you know, really control the room, you know, so these are just different characteristics that, that all comes with a part of this thing. Again, this is way deeper than just throwing on a garment and saying the white man's the devil. Here at Great Millstone, through the spirit of poverty, how about Shimmy Yawashi, there's a bit of char character building. You know, that you go through. It says, a man that has traveled knoweth many things, and he that has much experience will declare wisdom. That's so true. You know, again, you could even bump across, hey, Apostle of the I was watching one of his lessons. I can't remember which one, but he was talking about two types of brothers. You know, a brother that could quote a million scripture. He might not have, you know, too much experience in, in, in life. You know, and then you have that brother that got a shit ton of experience, but he can't really quote too much scriptures, you know. 
So it's most sides gonna give give you a bit of both, man. All right. As 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 you come in this thing and you stay in this thing, trust me, there's different shit that's gonna be thrown at you. All right. That's you, our car situation. You know how to deal. With, you know some type of negative thing might happen with your car. Your housing situation might get fucked up. And now when a brother comes up to you and asks you, how you how, how should I go about this with my car? How should I go about this this housing situation? My my rent situation. All right, you could tell them scriptures of comfort, but you could also now give them real life experiences, man. You know, trial and error that you've been through that you could that that brother could um learn from and and avoid the situation. And I've done lessons like this before, but guess what? Hey, the spirit, you know, the spirit wanted to brought out again. So um, I believe I only had. This is a real scripture I want to send around, but I had two more to add on. This lesson is going to be very direct, and you know, not much needs to be said. I don't want to force anything. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. I'm going to start at 1. The point is in 5, I believe, or 4. Therefore, being justified by the faith, we have peace without power. Therefore, being justified by faith. So we know justified goes back to the Hebrew word to Zadok. We're made righteous through the faith. Remember um, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4? The just shall live by faith. Because this thing that we're in right now is about faith, all right? That's what's really making us righteous. And that's how it's always been, you know? Going even all the way back to Abraham. Abraham was not justified by works. He was justified by his faith. But the same scripture says that Abraham was justified by works. What does it mean? Does the, does the scripture contradict itself? Nah, all right? It's the works of faith. Abraham had faith. So that's what really makes a man righteous to believe in this thing. It says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with Yahweh Bashim Yahushai through our Lord Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai being that ark, man. All right. Between us and the Heavenly Father. Going up on the, the cross for us, for the sins of all, really all the nation of Israel. But it's things also, this thing starts with this, the, this elect. All right, and that's how it's always been. That's who Moses delivered. That's who Joshua delivered. As it says in the book of Ecclesiastes, it's always been about the elect. All right, whether it's eight souls in that day, or you know, three hundred men, or or now time one hundred and forty-four thousand in the remnant. You know, it's always been a chosen few. It says, "By whom also, verse two, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace." wherein we stand and rejoice in hope for the glory of the Most High. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. We glory in tribulations. Paul, all the apostles, they done been through some shit, man. You know, wait a minute. The apostles, the, the apostles, they weren't really, at least back then in this time, they weren't deep scripture guys like on Paul's level. Bet you, bet you what, though? Them, them brothers was fishermen, so I bet you they had all types of experience in the world. You know? So it's a mixture of both. So when you're going through that particular hell, whatever, you know, you done dipped your hand in the cookie jar, fucked up, so the most I was putting you through some shit, do some shit, hold fast, bro. Because them, them demons will have you think some stupid shit. The more they want you to, they want you to sit. They're going to have you thinking stupid shit, stupid shit in your mind, but you just got to wave it off like, look, man, that ain't me, man. That's some demons talking, you know? And I don't want to really give no credit to the demons and Satan because they really get their orders from the Most High. And if you're new to this, yes, Satan, the demons, they all work for the Heavenly Father. So I don't really want to give them, like, to make it look like they, you know, like they're autonomous or something. No, all right? They all have missions to do and they all get their, order, their orders from the Most High. So the Most High is the one that really puts the good, the good and the evil on us. That we may have this experience through tribulation. It says also knowing that the tribulation worketh patience. See that? So if you put two and two, 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 and two together, and, you know the scriptures don't outright say it, but you could get it that that that, that, that um somebody that experienced is going to have great patience. That's how you. That's how much you could tell how really experienced a man is. How how much you know how much patience he has because he's seen it already. You know. He's seen certain situations already. Apostle Elder Gabal was does his lessons. He said, look, man, uh, I believe it was uh, Elder Yaikov, how quiet he was because he's been in the truth for decades. So it's like you don't seen everything. 
You ever play a video game and you play the video game and each level get harder, but then you go back to the first level. You can kind of run through that first level. There's no, there's no, a trap door doesn't surprise you. You know, like they might have, you know, you're going through the video game and a trap door a couple times catches you. But, you know, if you played the game so many times, it's like, you know, well, something's going to pop out, this, that, then, you know, that sense of suspense and shock doesn't really get to you because you've played the game so much. And, you know, so too with this truth, you know, if you go through the same situations over and over and you come out on the other side, you can just tell when, you know, a trap is being set for you, you know, a particular snare is being set for you, whether it's a woman that's trying to get you out there to, um, that, that wants you to stay at home with her on, on Saturdays or, you know, when the family's trying to have you deviate from this thing, or you might get a job that's taking away time from the truth. You know, everything, you start to see certain shit, like, okay, you know, the, the, you know that situation is working that way and that way, you know, I see what's happening, and of course, I'm going to consult and get counsel and be willing to stay in this thing, you know? That's that real world, that's, that's, that's that real world experience that does account for something, man, all right? Uh, verse 4, and patience, experience, and experience, hope. Man, that's that's just, that's just beautiful how the brother worded it. It says, in the patience, it says, um, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and the patience, experience. Point being simple, man. And in the experience, hope. And you see that as your experience grows, as your tribulation grows, because the two are in tandem, so would your faith. You know, so will your faith. You start to get more and more grounded. With that, I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah, Bahashim Rakak Wadash, the blindness of the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, True Well. Salutations to the hopeful elect out there. You Akim Tasadakim, the do thing in the utmost truth and sincerity. What Shalak Rayam, Ayel Kal Adawamim, what Gawaiim, what two thirds, and those that try to gain say against this word. Shalom.